So you're wanting to shoot video content, but you're not entirely sure what device to use. And when I say device, what camera you use. A really big thing to think about is what actually is usable for you. This is gonna be a big factor and actually determine what you're actually gonna use because if you don't know how to use a actual camera, <laughs> I say the word actual a lot, if you don't know how to use the camera, like a DSLR camera, then the worst thing in the world, especially if you're a business owner, you're not somebody that's a videographer and uses these DSLR cameras, you don't wanna spend hours upon hours trying to learn how to use the camera. What lenses you need, what you know what, what what settings to put the camera on and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to mess around with that. So the biggest question is, what do I use then? Do I use my cell phone? Do I use a DSLR camera? If I do, how do I get started with it? Uh, these are all things that you need to be thinking about because video content is definitely something that's out of the question. You have to be doing that if you're a business owner in some way, shape, or form. You don't have to even be an influencer. You still should be shooting video content. And even if it's just you or somebody on your team, a spouse, something like that, Whatever it is, you still need to be doing video. So let's talk about the kind of like the synopsis of what kind of video you should be shooting on what device because there are some things to think about. So obviously the given is the camera on your smartphone. Now, smartphones nowadays have incredible cameras. And if I were to give you some advice on what to actually use with your camera phone, is to use the back camera because it's always gonna be 10 times better than the front facing camera. But I know a lot of times, especially because it has the screen and you can see yourself, it's gonna be a lot easier to actually do a front facing camera. But at the same time, you're not gonna get the best quality that you can get. So if that's one of your goals is to get the best quality that you could possibly get, my recommendation would be to set this out on a phone mount and then position yourself to where you know you're in the camera view and then shoot the video that way because that's gonna be the best way to get the video camera uh, to perform at the max from your cell phone. Now the other thing is audio. Now what do I do with audio? Uh, most phones nowadays do not have headphone jacks so you can't just plug in a lapel mic nowadays. So here's the thing, there's a couple of things to think about is number one, they do now make a Bluetooth kind of Bluetooth uh, microphones that you can use for your cell phone. Another option is a lot of people use like their AirPods or headphones in some way, shape or form. That's an option as well. My recommendation would be to use a Bluetooth uh, microphone if you possibly can. Now, if you do have the phone close enough to you, the alternative is that you can actually use the microphone on your cell phone. Now, again, if you are shooting videos with your cell phone, you are going to be at more of an amateur stage of shooting videos. At some point, you will need to upgrade to a full-on DSLR camera or even a point-and-shoot, which I'm about to show you. Uh, but the audio is definitely important, and my recommendation is using your cell phone, um, the, the actual microphone on your cell phone, because it's gonna pick up your voice the best. You can use AirPods, but I've seen a lot of people use those and the video audio doesn't always turn out the best. A lot of times it sounds muffled and whatnot. But if it does sound good for you, I know it's like kind of every other person that uses it. It's really weird. I think it depends on the reception that you have, the actual Bluetooth function inside your phone, the connection that, that's, that, that's between there. So take all those things into consideration and just figure that out. But cell phone videos are definitely something that you can do. I know a lot of people, especially YouTubers, will actually start with their cell phones. So don't be ashamed of that. I don't want you to be ashamed of starting off with your cell phone. That's how I started shooting my videos. In fact, my podcast, I started shooting on my cell phone as well. This is one of the most powerful content marketing devices that you can use because it's so versatile. You can take the video that you shot on your phone and literally post it straight away to YouTube or to Facebook and you really do no editing and it'll be okay. So starting off with this is okay, but we need to upgrade at some point, but I would not go directly to the DSLR camera right away. Let me show you what the next step up would be. So the next step up would be what's called a point and shoot camera. Now this is a little kind of pocket size that literally can fit in your pocket uh, camera that does incredible video. So this is not really gonna be for imagery, this is gonna be what's called for, uh, you've probably heard the term vlog, V-L-O-G. That's what most vloggers use is this because it's super easy to just hold and do like this. Now, this one specifically, this is the Canon G7X. They do have a Mark II and I think a Mark III now, I just got the first one. And so when it is turned on, you can actually see yourself in that LCD screen and then you can hold the camera like this and then film that way. Now, here's the thing. Again, we we'll go back to audio. Audio is not the greatest on this, but the Mark II actually has a microphone jack where you can plug in a literal shotgun microphone or even a lapel mic and then actually record that way. Make sure you get clean, super squeaky clean audio and still have this compact design with you to shoot videos. 
And again, this one has a tripod mount, so you can actually put this on a tripod and then film it that way, and you can still see yourself because the screen is flipped up that way. Now, Sony makes these as well. Sony does great with these point and shoot cameras too. Uh, but again, I think for in terms of the best quality, this is gonna be the best quality you can get and usability. The usability on this is incredible. Leave it on autofocus, leave it on auto filter because you're gonna turn it on, you're literally just gonna point and shoot and that's it. You don't have to adjust anything. You don't have to touch settings at all. And it's going to get you the best video quality that you can put out. This is definitely the next step up from a cell phone because it's an actual camera and it's going to get you incredible imagery, but then also make sure you get that audio. So I would not go with this uh, camera specifically because the audio, you can't really, the audio on this is okay, but you can't plug a microphone into it. So keep that in mind. Now we'll talk about the next step up, a DSLR camera. At what point should you go into a DSLR camera? I think it's at a point where you can actually have somebody show you how to do it. Now, here's the thing about DSLR cameras nowadays is they're really easy to use. They're a lot easier to use than they were five to 10 years ago where only really videographers and photographers could pick up a DSLR camera and use it correctly. Now, this is an EOS, um, a Canon 6D. This is a kind of a bulky, big camera. This is the one that I shot on for probably close to eight years. And this is a great camera, but it is definitely not the, the most ideal camera if you're starting off with a DSLR camera. My biggest recommendation would be to use what I'm actually shooting on right now, which is the EOS R. This is a great camera, but it's a little bit on the pricey end. Uh, be ready to spend somewhere between $1,500 to, $1, to $2,000 on this camera, including the lens. But it's great because it's a small compact design, but it's very digital as opposed to mechanical. Most of these DSLR cameras are mechanical. This is 100% digital. So if you look into the viewfinder, it's gonna be 100% digital. You'll be able to see in real time what's going on with your imagery. But again, I would leave this on autofocus. I would leave this on auto filter. So literally what's going on right now is all auto. I'm not having to you know, move the ring in order to focus or whatever. If I put my hand there, it's at some point going to focus on my hand. And so that's a great function of it. And then it's gonna focus back on my face, right? And so you're not gonna have to mess with any of that. I literally don't have somebody shooting the video right now. My videographer is on vacation right now and I'm shooting these videos. Turns out great, I'm doing it by myself. And yes, I'm a videographer, but I don't make it complicated. I plug in a little microphone, a lapel mic, plug it into the camera and you're good to go. So keep it simple. Even if you get to that DSLR range, uh, maybe even the next step up is hiring a videographer if you get to that destination. But if you're gonna leave it at the DSLR camera stage, still keep it as simple as possible because if you make it complex for yourself, you know my saying, if you make it more complex, you're just gonna be less likely to do anything with it. So keep it simple. Those are the stages of cameras that I would use, but it's really gonna be dependent on what your skill set is and how technologically competent you are. You really need to be self-aware of that. And my recommendation is if it starts to get too complex for you, if you're literally winding down because you don't like how difficult it is to set all of it up, then back yourself up into the last step of the shooting. So if the DSLR camera is too much for you, go back to the point and shoot camera and don't be ashamed of that. If this is too much for you, go back to the cell phone camera and don't be ashamed of that. Truthfully, I actually shoot videos on all three of these devices as well. So you can always, uh, you know, taking around a DSLR camera, if you're gonna do say a property walkthrough or something like that, that's not the best thing to do. Honestly, it would be a cell phone or even a point and shoot camera because it's a lot more compact, it's easier to lug around and it's definitely a lot more portable and easy to whip open. So those are my recommendations. If you have any questions, I know a lot of this was a lot more technical driven and telling you what to use, uh, but if you have any questions about how to set these things up or how to get going with video content, I do have a bunch of links down in the description below to connect with me. Make sure you click on one of those, including a one hour consultation you could set up with me, the first link down in the description there. Um, if you did find value in this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, and then also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.